Hey, good evening traders. Hope everyone's doing well on this Wednesday evening. I just wanted to do a really quick rundown on today's price action and see where the trades were. Um, first thing I want to update on is this copy trading test portfolio that we're doing. Uh, it's doing okay. Uh, this is the conservative, quote unquote conservative version. Um, first couple of weeks, uh, 25%. Volatility not where I wanted. Drawdown not great. But, you know, um, to be honest, I changed my trading style. Uh, during this kind of section, th this dip, and I start scaling with lower lots and gridding, and uh, it didn't work out so well. So I, st I stopped that, fr uh, frankly, just today, and went back to my normal style, and hope <laughs> things are back to normal. So hopefully we see more, more of this and less of this as time goes on. But hey, um, that's what testing periods are for, and well, we'll see how it goes. Everything's audited, so just ask me for the link if you like. Uh, anyway, on to today. Um, where are we at? Let's see. 3 a.m. overnight. Selling climax after this huge drop uh, last night, which we forecasted. We forecasted this would be a bearish day and it would fall into the daily FVG. Um, go back in the chat, and that is all there. Um, so. Yesterday's low is marked out and it's broken and we get the selling climax at 3.45 a.m. So we'll just check the morning analysis to see what we said. Um, morning analysis. Okay. broad plan as usual we kind of look for a sweep of some kind um we don't want to trade you know in, in, right in the middle just in general in the extremes uh there's going to be exceptions and we have to kind of just play the day as it unfolds things may change um but that was the plan uh we have this h4 demand below um, which we didn't end up testing. Uh, so anyway, but that's usually the plan is wait for, you know, outside of the value area, you know, within the range, try and catch a reversal. If not, we've got plenty of other setups to, um, try and deduce the day's price action. Um, if we look at the DXY. Um, the plan was this to wait for this breakdown and then move up below the highs of the day, uh, either directly from here or moving down. So eventually it ended up building support here, moving up, uh, and then crashing down. So keeping an eye on Dixie the, throughout the day always very important and these apexes these lines they're just broad guides um just to kind of tell you where i'm thinking um so i'm kind of looking uh looking for the short before the long kind of thing um is the idea so news wise well we had um an important monetary policy speaker so there was a lot of volatility a lot going around with um, monetary policy and fiscal policy, so the Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey has kind of batted that back to the government to deal with. So we'll see what happens. I notice they're really focusing on linkers. Um, in my opinion, they should be focusing on the long end of the yield curve, where most of the pension assets lie, but hey, I've not, I've not got a Nobel Prize in economics, I've only got a master's. So, well, you know, I'll leave um, Mr. Haskell to work it out, I'm sure he's very competent. And we had USD PPI later in the afternoon. Um, so here we are, sailing climax. Huge move up. Of course, it's 5 a.m. We're just waking up at this time. 
but um, this was our automatic rally, okay? Just your classic Wyckoff. So Asia High also. So then we have this kind of compression move down. Note we're in a M15 FVG. Uh, we get the secondary test, and I, I'd call this the de facto Asia low. Um, I, if you go back to my section on uh, key levels, um, I'm mark M15 swing lows as key levels. This was one. If we're trading within this range, you have to be aware that this could be the kind of like you know, the real low that we target rather than uh, the real Asia low, which was down here. Um, so yeah, use your trader brain, work out what's going on. You can't just kind of blindly walk into the markets waiting for, you know, hopefully a move down here. You just kind of have to watch what's going on. So a lot of kind of choppy movement during Frankfurt. I think I took a, honestly, I took a loss or two here, try and mess around with it. Um, I'm sure we had some kind of setup here for the short, but um, 8.30, what was happening? can't remember. Somebody must have grabbed the short, but I certainly didn't. Um, I saw this as the spring below the M15 swing low. Okay, the de facto Asia low. And it was around London that I was looking for my first entry. Um, here I found an entry. So if we go back to our volume clusters, generally, I mean, price action wise, we had the spring and then this move up. And we can kind of consider this as like a mini uh, mini demand. And usually what I do is, you know, if we get an impulse like that, I always measure it, especially if it's at a key time. Um, after we've broken a low and we've got a set up one forming. And we're not trying to catch the low here. We're not like trying to fade it, you know. Um, I was asked, you know, how I, f how I fade the moves. Generally, we're not looking to like catch bottoms like this, okay? Um, usually there's a chance to get in in a safe way. So looking at the volume clusters, you wanna look for the kind of high volume um, within the demand or supply that we're looking at. So here we get it, the VC was here. Um, now, I ended up entering is in this kind of, you know, generally, we're looking in this kind of range for a buy, right, under the 50% area, preferably below 62. Did end up getting a buy, uh, you know, I ended up getting stopped out break even, unfortunately, and not re-entering, which was very, very annoying, because we ended up rallying up quite hard, <laughs> of course missed out on uh, how many pips I, you know I don't even want to don't even want to count but for the, for the sake of you know 100 100 pip move up to Asia high preferably clips Asia high um, you know actually kind of an easy trade but um, I guess I just wasn't on the ball in this case but a uh, perfect kind of setup one uh, break of an Asia low um, and into a volume cluster or an imbalance. Uh, so that's that. That's the confirmation area. You can use fibs as well, just to kind of guide you. Um, generally, like you wouldn't want to enter here. Say, say there was an imbalance here, right? Uh, you wouldn't want to enter, you know, uh, above the fifty percent mark. Um, generally, it's going to give you lower probability odds wise. So we're still, this whole gray area is the uh, D1 FVG, but generally it's been filled, right? So if we just move all this junk out of the way, pretty much that whole daily FVG is filled. So we can get rid of that. Oh, I saw this as M15 demand. 
here we have basing basing here followed by the automatic rally and you notice our spring clipped the M15 demand so gotta keep that in mind okay we had the um, secondary test break below Asia low into M15 demand and a safe entry on the volume cluster anyway uh, we move up 100 pips up to Asia up to the next you know, kind of key level whatever you pick um, um, you know value area high whatever you like Asia high um, so I end up um, you know trade list at this point in fact I'm in a loss at this point I end up taking some longs in here um, for example um, like I took a long here uh, just based on absorption okay big absorption here and then a 20 zero created which supported so I saw that as a long entry uh, just just based on a liquidity sweep uh, based you know kind of a setup one type idea uh, liquidity sweep and then cr creation of an uh, imbalance and then we got a 30 pip move up so I just grabbed that at this um, little supply so you know in profit now thankfully because we can get very precise entries you know with tiny stop losses I went in with quite high risk so with 30 pips um, you know I like 10 R it completely erases my losses um next trade we're at the last point of support if you notice this is kind of formed a general support area um we'll get rid of this this is demand by the way this cluster pushes up and we accumulate within it and what do we get is New York open okay and this triangle is created I think if you get a triangle like this nine times out of ten they're gonna sweep both sides they're not gonna just break out and go long so any breakout like this uh, you can almost just short it in anticipation of um you know of the actual real move which was the the long here and because we're on the last point of support and bearing in mind what we're talking about with Dixie uh, it had corresponded with a drive up and we were expecting a drive down in the morning you know I figured it would be around here you never know exactly you just have to watch it as it goes it ended up going up to the the higher supply um, and then dropping um, which gave us our long so I had to enter this long you can do it in pure price action um, like I teach in the course um, you know you just draw a fib in the impulse and look for that midpoint and you get quite a, quite a tight entry just with price action alone, supply, break a structure, retest, and boom. You know, you have to be ready for it. You have to believe in the trade, obviously. Um, now, if you want to use footprint, I actually don't think I did in this occasion. Uh, there was a. Sorry, that was for the prior trade. We'll just pull it up on trading view. Okay, double zero. Retest of double zero. It holds. Uh, and you can get your entry here. You know, stop plus underneath. Um, and yeah, that's it. Um, that's where we took our long. 
uh, right here. And I ended up closing it just on the first impulse. Um, I actually went short into here for another reason, but whatever. We'll get into that. It's it was a it was based on something else, not what I teach, so I, I won't get into it here. Um, I just rode it up for like 30, 40 pips or something. I, I had a target of London high in mind, but by 4 o'clock, that's kind of my time to stop trading, so I just forgot about it. Um, I didn't want to just, you know, go through this pain just to get a few extra pips. Usually, if you get a shot up like this, it's a good idea just to bank it. Um, so, let's zoom out. Um, that's it really, last point of support, got our sign of strength, and back up, and I'm seeing this as accumulation for long, um, basically, let's see, I've actually not done my evening analysis yet, so I'm not totally... Uh, I'm not saying it's long tomorrow by any means. Uh, still to think about it. Uh, we have H1 supply up here, which we just did. We, we just missed, but you know it's depending. If you do supply covering the wick, then it would have kissed it. Um, but I drew I drew supply a bit tighter, uh, and we have a lot of supply and FVGs up here. So we'll see. I have a feeling it may range a little bit. Um, and you know what? I'm not going to say anything because I've not done any analysis on it. So I'm going to do that now. Um, just do some evening markups and get rid of all the crap, uh, all the markups from the, the day before. And hopefully we can turn this into something much bigger. Um, hopefully 50, you yeah. 50% by two weeks or one week, we'll see. I uh, don't want to count my chickens, but you know, let's keep on growing. Um, these setups are everywhere. The opportunities are abundant. The market's an endless stream of opportunities. And yeah, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Um, and I'm gonna wish you an amazing Wednesday evening, uh, whatever you're doing. And we've still got Thursday and Friday uh, to trade, so. Have a good one and good night.